gotta bring, I gotta bring this back, yo. If y'all don't know what I'm listening to right now, so I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Yo, we ran out of pamphlets and we, we running out of gear. Come sign up, come get down with the gang, yo. You heard? We out here unionizing. I'm more ready. We out here. They thought they was going to silence us. I'm right here. Look, Amazon in the back of me, Amazon in front of me. But my team is out here. Day one on 420. Sign up. If you're a JFK 8 worker, if you are a DYX2 worker, and I think the other one is LJ and D. You work at one of these things. Come see us. We got something for y'all. We about to take this fight to Amazon again. We got the whole management looking at us. We got security out here. They tried to tell us we can't set up shop at the bus stop. This is public property. They bug it. And I'm out here. Amazon boycott. Boycott Amazon all day. Y'all know the Y'all know the vibe. Come see us. We got some cards for you. We got some candy for y'all. I think they're from New York, yeah. W in New York. Wow. And it's so funny because they're affiliated with the RWDSU. Yeah, the, the RWDSU is a big, like that small, big brother, small brother. Yeah, I mean, I mean, UFCW is much bigger. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, they're bigger because they have over a million or something members. Yeah, no, UFCW is a big uh, union, you know. Uh, uh, I, I, I imagine if I hang around long enough, we'll all find out what role the parent union because that's what UFCW is, it's the parent union of RWDSU right. but that does not tell you anything about what kind of advice or resources they put into uh, Bessemer but um, well whatever, you know it's, uh, you know but I'm glad that they came out and uh, that's a good sign that uh, people are taking what you're doing uh, very seriously no, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I noticed do. that, um, you know, more and more, you know, first there was the truth out of peace yeah. uh, on the uh, on a Staten Island Drive. And, and that generated a number of other pieces. As a matter of fact, some some news sources and websites just uh, copied the uh, the truth out story. Right. But right, today, right. today I've seen some uh, some uh news sites that are writing their own including like the washington examiner and uh, uh actually it, it, this is not really surprising because you know when something like this happens a lot of the people who get their heads up first and watch it a lot are business news sites like business insider because yeah. they're, they're like hey uh oh uh oh they they're, today they're back, you know. <laughs> they, they, called, they called me today. I was on the phone with Business Insider today. You know, they they, they thought they had slain the dragon in, in, in Alabama, but they're back. They're okay. back. You know, it's so that's kind of cool. Later. Like, and um, and and the crazy thing is, uh, the Washington Post called me yesterday. So like, yep. so Jeff, Bezos, yeah, Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post, so you know that means he knows about it. Once you get once you get to Washington, the, 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 the trendsetters, as you know, I mean, you know, after, you know, the year of uh, uh, intense experience that, that, that you have experienced, you know, once you get the Washington Post and the New York Times, then you're like, that's it, you know, because those are, those are the two. Actually, you know, the, you know who owns the Washington Post? Yeah, I just mentioned that. Yeah. I just said, <laughs> I said yeah, 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 Jeff Bezos is aware. That's so funny shit. You know, they have a, uh, they have some bullshit clause that uh, the editorial staff, uh, quote unquote, negotiated with Bezos. Right. That, you know, just because he owns the paper, uh, the editorial staff uh, insist on the, uh, the ability to act independently. And uh, yeah, he signed it. But you know, that's just a piece of paper. 
<laughs> they, could still be, they could still be bought if they wanted to, but really, that, that, I'm I'm sure if there's something, you know, well, you don't know. It's it's one of the contradictions. They have they have covered surprisingly. They have covered you know both sides yeah. of the story. Yeah, they, and they, they haven't they, been too they, biased, but they definitely could have done a lot more. They mm -hmm. have they 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 pick and choose their battles wisely. Is what uh -huh. I'm saying. Uh -huh. I, I would love to have been a fly on the wall at some of these uh, interesting discussions they had in the editorial room or the Washington Post, you right. know, about their boss and his relationship to what was going on, either in Staten Island or, or Bessemer, Alabama or some other place. But uh, so, uh, you know, I hope you, you, you're going out of D.C. On, on Saturday, right? I'm going to Philly, yeah. I'm Philly, Philly, that Philly, right, right, right. How you how you getting down there? Are you driving or training or going on? I think no. I'm gonna get a ride by my brother. If not, then uh -huh. I'll, I'll definitely have to catch the train. But I don't want to miss it. You know, it's an important moment for Mumia. Absolutely, absolutely. I'll, I'll be down there. Oh yeah, how you getting I'll, down there? Uh, there's a bus that's being organized by uh, Mumia supporters. Okay. I, I guess we're leaving out here uh, pro probably before noon. I think the uh, I think yeah, the like rally in Philly starts at two. You know, so uh, yeah, yeah, around two, I believe. So yeah, I'll yeah. be down there. So I'll see you down there. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I think I'm, my brother's going to, going to ride down with me. All my um my step pops mm -hmm. is going. Nah. Ride. We got some family down there. We got mm -hmm. some down there that I want to see. So um. It's gonna be a great weekend, you know. Yeah. Be out yeah. Tomorrow, I'm gonna spend my Friday at the Amazon building again. Like I said, I'm I'm out there every day I can. So mm -hmm. I'm out there again at seven in the morning. Mm -hmm. I just pulled the I just pulled another ten hour shift. Like it's like I, it brought me back to working there. I, my body is wow. hurting right now. Wow, wow, Eat that's up. awesome. Back hurt, but it's worth it because I know I'm on the right side of this fight this time. So, so um. You know, have uh, have have television stations come out there? You know, uh, um, radio stations sent out. You know, have they done that yet? Yeah. So we had some journalists come out already. Um, they mm -hmm. came out two times. Then we had some not uh not media crews uh, like uh, major media yet, but um, mm -hmm. our own independent film filmmakers are coming out there. Oh, okay. And shooting footage okay. and doc. <laughs> Here's a, here's a, you know, uh, a tricky question. Do you consider the media attention at this stage in the campaign to be helpful? Uh, are you just neutral about it? Or do you consider it to be uh, actually, um, you know, favorable? So no, I, I think it's helpful. It's just that the information that they write, we got to be careful about, you mm -hmm. know? I know mm -hmm. today I spoke to a couple of them, a couple of journalists over the phone and did some phone interviews or whatever. And I told them, um, you know, I don't want to provide too much of what we got going on right now because, mm -hmm. you know, right now we snuck up on Amazon. Amazon had no idea we was going to pop up on it mm -hmm. because, the, you know, I was getting the rumors from the building. They're like, yeah, management's been scrambling, having meetings. They don't mm -hmm. know what to do right now because mm -hmm. where we're set up, we're like right in the middle of all three buildings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the bus mm -hmm. stop is right there in the middle. They can't move us. Mm -hmm. So they can't do what they did in Alabama. They mm -hmm. can't, they can't uh turn the no traffic light. We don't gotta worry about no traffic light. Mm -hmm. They can't move the public bus station, you mm -hmm. know, so they can't do that. Um, mm -hmm. so they have to figure out a real strategy now. So we <laughs> have did you yeah. know that UFCW was coming out there or did that catch you by surprise? Oh, they caught me by surprise. They just they just popped up, two guys, and I was like, hey. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. that's, um, that's, uh, that's very interesting. Did you, you know, did you all, you know, arrange to sort of uh, talk later or, you know? I gave my number. I gave my phone mm -hmm. number and, um, and um, I took their number, you know, so they said they're going to reach out to their president. Mm -hmm. uh, once they reach out to their president, I guess mm -hmm. they get back to me. Mm -hmm. uh, so Anybody from Teamsters show any interest? Not yet. I haven't mm -hmm. I haven't heard from the Teamsters yet, but I, I heard, like I said, the MTA and the bus drivers, mm -hmm. they also they also on board of what we're doing. So some of the bus drivers were like they're gonna talk to their president because they know and, and, and what's their union, the bus drivers. 
Um, so there's multiple unions that they under, but I think the majority of them are under that TWU Local 100. Oh, TWU Local 100. Oh yeah, you had the. I remember like uh, I, that's running for president. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Now. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, my go-to person in in in, in uh, that union is Charles Jenkins, uh, who is the head of education. Right. You, right. To, to be honest with you, I, I haven't asked him about you know the elections and his view on that, because I you know I I don't want to be you know whatever you know that, it, that is what it is. I don't want to you know I, I you know I, I'm making an assumption. It could, it could be a it could be an erroneous assumption that since he's the head of the education department, he must be friendly with the current leadership. Now that's not necessarily true. But it's like, that's not something, I, that's not a can of worms I want to open up with him right now. You know, it's, it's all yeah, good. Yeah. You know, it's all good, you know, so. Uh, yeah, I mean, I understand. And, you know, um, Evangeline, you know, either way, I think Evangeline will be a great president. She's a strong black woman, but, you know, mm -hmm. I support her and I don't know their relationship. So don't get involved mm -hmm. until it, it happens, you know, but um, mm -hmm. if, if you can, you know, tell Charles, you know, reach out. We do need resources if he can offer anything. Mm. Uh, you know, I was supposed to, you know, uh, Chris Silvera, who was, um, he was up in Harlem on uh, on March 20th. I think that was his truck, actually. Yeah. Uh, and he, he's the, uh, he's basically the head of Teamsters Local 808, which is in Long Island City, Queens. And uh, he told me that, um, you know, uh, in the in the wake of uh, Bessemer, that uh, the uh, the Teamsters locals in New York were coming together to have a strategy session about Amazon because Amazon had brought a number of reasons. Amazon has brought a lot of real estate in New York in the last, you know, year. I mean, they just been any any piece of real estate that's available that's on the market, you know, they brought it. I mean, they don't even. I mean, it, it, it's like they got plans, I guess, to you know, uh, um, uh, create warehouses, more warehouses. Yeah. But but it's like it, it, it's it, it's like somewhere between eight and ten big pieces of real estate, uh, and also uh, what Amazon is doing is squeezing the Teamsters because the Teamsters, uh, they are the union that represents the UPS workers. And, and what Amazon is doing is going around them, you know, with their own drivers or right. with, right. with contract drivers, you know, which is a whole nother category. And that's squeezing UPS out, you know, so there's something that you mentioned. That. Yeah, some teamsters that are worried about, you know, their future existence because of what Amazon is doing. Amazon is, Amazon's a monster, man. Amazon is like, you take this is like Star Wars and shit, Chris. That's I what mean, I, I said. You're that taking on, saying. man. You know, you taking on. I mean, you know. <laughs> They take it over the world. And you sort of, you sort of like, you know, the, the U.S. government, Amazon, which is, which is. You know, it's like, I don't know, you know. I don't even know what, who runs the country. Is, is really, it Amazon yeah. or is, is it the president? We don't know anymore. I mean, I mean, these people can call a bus company and say, you know, listen, on such and such a date, you know, have passengers depart someplace else because they're having a rally there. We don't want them to, you know. I mean, well, that, you know, <laughs> but they can put, they can put a post, call up the post office. Put the post office box in front of our, you know, entrance and shit. You know, I mean, overnight, overnight. Yeah. Just change the overnight. traffic lights. Change, change the traffic. I mean, you know, that's some shit. That's some, that's some CIA stuff, man. That's some home. I mean, you know, that's powerful, man. Nah, that's, that's like scary powerful and shit. Nah, it, but, it, you know, it's true, man. It's true. They don't, they don't have no remorse by what the shit they do. They just do it. They take mm -hmm. the punches and they. And they take the media and mm -hmm. they do it again. They don't, it's no repercussions for what they're doing. It's, yeah. it's just nothing. Not so, so is, 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 is this, this is, this is the podcast we're on. We're doing it. 
Well, I mean, my okay. boy's been recording, so I guess so. Yeah, we started. Okay. Up. Oh, okay. It's All right. Oh, podcast cool. is just like this conversational, and and oh, I mean, that's cool. That's that's cool. That's all. Awesome. That's all. Awesome. It's so funny because I don't, I don't have no specific questions to ask you. I like just talking to you, and mm-hmm. and what I was going to ask, I was going to. It's funny that you brought up UPS too because that just mm-hmm. reminded me that today while I was out there, a UPS driver, a pulled over and said, "Yeah, I've been a unionized worker for thirty-one years." So he said he's going to reach out to his president. So we got three, three potential resources coming our way. Yeah, yeah. You know. from bus drivers, from UPS drivers, and also from the the UFCW. So that'll be if that happens, and yeah. we're we're up and running for real. I mean, uh, either way, regardless, I can tell you now, my one little tent and my one little table out there is is doing some work. You got a tent. You got a tent oh, I, I, I didn't play. I bought two tents. I got two mm-hmm. tents. Uh, I got a gen. I bought the generator out there today. I had mm-hmm. the generator. I got the speaker, the loud speaker. We out there playing music all day long. I'm blasting it too, so they oh, can wow. hear me. Oh, oh. They can hear me all the way at the building. <laughs> and they can- what, what kind of music you playing? You playing old school stuff? Are you, are you, oh, are you, are you, yeah. Recent stuff that I would actually not be aware of because I. You know, if it, if it didn't come out in the seventies and the eighties, I probably don't. I'm probably not even aware of it. You know, <laughs> no, I play some old school. I'm I'm an eighties like, baby, so yeah. you know, I'm an eighties baby, so I play old school hip hop all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, and definitely some some revolutionary uh, music. You know, oh great, that, great. Man. I got a whole playlist. Mm-hmm. I just play the playlist over and over. Oh something good, or something yeah. I would play it. But mm-hmm. we having fun now. Now we're having fun because the buzz the the buzz is in the building. Like workers were coming up with their mm. phones in their hands, like, yo, I'm at the union thing. Come, come. come <laughs> so we That's know awesome. that was yesterday. That's great. That's great. You know, are, are you taking are, are you taking lots of pictures and stuff? And maybe some uh I you know, maybe some videos of, of, of interactions with workers because that yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll come a, as you know, I don't have to tell you this, there'll be a time when that will be very helpful. Oh yeah, I got I got all that. I got a couple of videos. I've been I've been live streaming while I'm out there. So mm-hmm. I know you may not have IG, but if you do have Instagram, um, sometimes I'll go on on live where you can see me. Oh, okay, action. okay, okay. okay. I got so I got to get Instagram, man. I'm like I'm yeah. technologically challenged, brother. I I'm, mean, I'm like, I, but I gotta I gotta I gotta catch up. I gotta catch up. You know, it's like I'll post it on um I I'll send you some personals and I um I'll post oh, it on. On my yeah. Twitter page, it's public anyway. You can still, even if you don't have IG, you can go on my page because it's public. You know IG I mean? is what? What is that? The Insta, it's Instagram. It's That's Instagram. Okay, I, I got to put that on my list. Yeah. Get Instagram, man. Yeah. yeah. Get the Instagram. That's free, yeah. like everything else, right? Yeah, it's like Facebook, right. Instagram. Right. Get it's Instagram. All the same, man. They're all the same. I, they all do the same. I'm making a note to myself, brother. Get Instagram before you, you know, I don't know, have a medical emergency or some shit. Get it, get it <laughs> while you while you're here, you know. Nah, definitely get it because I go live on there every day and I, I post videos on there daily. So every time I'm out there, I'm gonna share some video content so people know it's real. And um, I usually so get what you know, all these things that I don't have, all these high-tech social media things, you know, I'm I'm uh in daily contact with other people, people who are closer to you in age. And if they see something that they think I would be interested in, uh, they usually make sure that I get it. So that's why I haven't rushed and got it, you know, because uh, it's just like, you know, I'm a thread, you know, like all these text threads now. That's what oh. people do, you know, telegram signal. I'm on like about, and it's like, don't tell. You gotta look on. You gotta look at your phone, man. And you know, for for a thirty-two year old like yourself, man, maybe that's But I, phone, man. I need something bigger, man. I need, you know, I, know. I got, I need something on my laptop that I can like. It can be like a, you know, big, big letters and shit instead of like. <laughs> tweet this motherfucker. But you know, whatever. It's all good. It's all you know, good, man. It's all. You know good. what? I I still I still have a, a hard time with it. I I hate being on my phone. I I hate being on my phone. But I'm mm-hmm. on constantly now i can't get off of it only because like you mentioned i'm in all these threads i'm mm. in all the group chats mm. i'm a signal t- you know telegram like you mentioned all these different apps and i had to apps, rot- man. i gotta rotate and check messages in all of them so that's that's the struggle that i have my dms are just like off the roof off the charts and i can't even catch mm. up i have I to mean, catch up 
you're, you're young, but you're not, you know, a kid. So like 10 years ago when you were 22, probably a lot of this stuff what wasn't even mean? around. No, no, definitely. I mean, we, we were dealing with stuff like we had emails. I know that we had texts. Yeah, like AOL. Like Remember AOL? AOL. Oh my, that was one of the first <laughs> ones, right? That was one of the first ones. I remember. Like yeah, AOL yeah, yeah. and like, yeah. Um, what else was out at the time? Like, Maybe Blackberry, you, if you had a Blackberry. You oh, Blackberries, that was the thing, man. Blackberries, Blackberry. Blackberries, you know. All that stuff is dead now. I remember Nokia's, you know, we, Nokia made the first phone. Little phone, little cute little phones, man. Put put that shit in your vest pocket, little, you little know. green screen, the green yeah, screen. Yeah, little green, yeah. <laughs> Nokia, everybody had a Nokia, you know. And the ones that were really cool was those, I been, I been like them over the smartphones, was the flip phones. They were like sexy. Those flip phones. You just flip yeah, the it ones, open. The them. ones with the uh, what they used to have the speaker, the Boost. Yeah, mobile. right. Those, Remember those when were... Boost Mobile first came out? Everybody had the yeah, Boost. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 they were cool. Walkie. They were cool. No, they were they were definitely cool. I don't know what I don't know what people did without these phones. I mean, I try to remember. Maybe it's the nineties. You know where. I, I used everybody's bumping into each other. You know, getting hit by cars. Look at the phone. You know, it's I don't know what we did. Like, we, we, how did we even exist? I mean, how do we feed ourselves? How do we communicate before all this stuff? We talk, you know. We talk like, to one another. We actually talk face to face. I know, I know that. Ah, I talk to somebody. It's now like, it's, no, now please, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, you know, when I meet somebody, the, the first thing they ask you in the first five minutes, yo, you got an Instagram. So, <laughs> that's, that's like more now. Before back in the day, you know, you ask if you you know, try to meet a girl or someone, you'd be like, hey, can I have your number? Mm -hmm. That's oh, all your Instagram. Uh, if the, if you know you're not, you know you're going to get past the second stage if you if you ask for a girl for your house number because she uh, would give you a cell phone number or the house number. Uh, and I was like, do you have an Instagram? Mm -hmm. You have an Instagram? Mm -hmm. Nah, I got one. Then you, you're out of there. It's so it's over. Mm -hmm. when you don't got an I, your <laughs> IG is your ID. That's what they say now. Your IG is your ID. Oh my goodness. Oh, so oh well, times have change, man. It's it's but it's. You know, it's necessary when you're doing, mm. um, you know, organizing because a lot mm. of the younger generation, that's that's who's leading the, the fight. The mm. younger generation obviously is in tune with social media, so we need it. I, yeah. I tell you, a lot of people, you know, uh, I, I almost reminded you about the May Day organizing uh, meeting that we had yet last night. But I figured that you're busy and, you know, you're doing what you need to do, you know, mobilizing your people on May 1. But the people are very excited that you all are coming and you're bringing some people that are organizing out in Staten Island. They're very excited about that. And they're very excited about, you know, marching from Union Square over to uh, Jeff Bezos's, uh, whatever the hell he's got. Is it an apartment? Is it a mansion? $80 million penthouse. Oh, my God. Eighty million dollar. That's that's obscene. I, he's got he's got at least two other residences in New yeah, York been City. A, been at least what three or four of them. We've been to four. He's got them. something in Greenwich Village. We've been. Oh, and you talk about in the New York area. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, you know, in the New York area. I mean, yeah. I don't know what he's. You know, I mean, what is he? Had slave traffic over here. I mean, who's, who's I don't, living in those apartments? Probably, you know, you know he. Yeah. Tell somebody to stay there, stay here, stay there. Who knows, man? I know last time we was out there, which was Christmas, mm -hmm. um, not only were we surrounded by police, we had police. He paid the whole pre precinct off. Mm -hmm. They were all pulled up in the motorcade with zip ties attached to their head. <laughs> I'm like, I got little kids out here singing in front of mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos' house, singing. We were singing Christmas carols. <laughs> He's, he pulls That's up, funny. they pull up all. They had the paddy wagon band and that. They, I'm like, y'all gonna arrest these us and little mm -hmm. kids? We were dressed up in L costumes. And it was funny because we were screaming, you know, singing, obviously anti Amazon stuff. But mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I'm like, no, just the fact that you spend all this money. I'm like, how mm -hmm. much do you pay y'all to babysit? Because that's what y'all doing right now. Did y'all feel important? Mm -hmm. The lights were on in the penthouse, so mm -hmm. we, possibility he was there. You, you know, should invite. You should invite him on one of your podcasts. Man. He'll never come, but that would be some interesting shit, you know. I, I uh, send the offer to him all the time. If, if Jeff Bezos would love to have a conversation with me on air, mm -hmm. that'd be great. But now, he, what's he what's he afraid of? He, he's rich, he's 
brilliant, you know, he's white, he's got everything going for him, he owns everything. So, you know, let's have a conversation about, you know, is, your is, workers, is you know, and how that's the question though. Is he really brilliant? Did you see him on that antitrust co committee hearing? I he, I I don't remember that. I, I remember it didn't go too well for him. Oh. And Billy, and when I said brilliant, I was joking. No, I know. I'm just uh, I'm just saying, look, like if he's Kat, brilliant, it's with a small B, brother. It's just what they it's it's just <laughs> what they say out there though. It's true. They yeah. put it out there as if this guy is just, you know, he created Amazon and it's just like you know, whatever. He, he may just have been in the right place at the right time. That's about it. That's may about have, his he brilliance. Had had some parents that had a lot of money. Which, oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah is, he, is he from California? Where's he, where's he from? He's from, like, uh, his mother's from Cuba. Or, or one of his parents. Oh, are hmm, interesting. And, um, oh, yeah. that's Be Bezos. Is, Be that, that, that's Spanish? Oh. oh. Half, half and half, you know. Oh, okay. Mixed with some, I, I don't remember the exact, but I know his one of his parents are from Cuba. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what What did you think of uh, you know the uh, the verdict with the Chauvin thing in uh, Minnesota? You know, I got mixed feelings. You know, is it people saying that we got justice? I don't believe we got justice. We didn't get justice. You know, we got accountability. So I'm um, I'm happy that he was held accountable. But the man should still be tried for murder, like you know, manslaughter and all that bullshit. They 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 spin it to make it seem like mm. it's justice. It's mm. not real justice, you know. It's justice in the sense of accountability. But I feel like um, just that same day, what happened that same day? A a little girl, fifteen That's years. That's right. Old, That's so, right. Yeah. So yeah. We don't even we don't even get a moment to breathe. You don't mm. get a moment to celebrate anything. There's nothing to you celebrate. Know, she called the cops? She called them herself. She was the one who called the cops to get the based people. on her feeling that she was in danger and they ended up shooting her. With her. And you did know. you see that video? I saw the video. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a few hours ago, I saw her her parents, you know, being think, interviewed. Know and and they couldn't even they couldn't even talk. No. How they couldn't could even they, they couldn't even talk, you know. And of course, today was the uh, today was the funeral for uh, Dante Wright. You yeah. know, uh, all the politicians were there. You know, it's just a, not, it's crazy. It's like we can't even we can't even celebrate a verdict. Mm -hmm. And it's not even a it's, celebration. It's, it's one it's one one piece of justice in one case up against thousands of times when, you know, there had been no justice for these victims and there's been no justice for their families and there's been no justice for black and black and brown people, you know? And, and you know, it's one thing to put a cop on trial. Yay, you know, whatever. But they need to put the system on trial because this racism is systemic. Uh, every cop knows this, unless you're the dumbest cop you know, working in you know a completely white neighborhood or something like that, you treat black and brown people differently. They're dangerous. They're violent, especially the men, but the women too. And so you shoot first and ask questions later. Later, you treat them like animals. That culture is hundreds of years old, Chris. That culture comes from it, it, it's descendant from. You know the, uh, the 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 gangs that they put together in the South to chase runaway slaves under slavery. Yep. And it was like with dogs and whips and shotguns and all that shit. And and, and modern policing, a lot of people don't notice. Uh, it it sort of grew out of those gangs that were chasing runaway slaves. That's right. And that racist mentality of like. Uh, we don't care whether you pay us. We're at war with you, you know. You know we'll we'll stop you for a broken, you know, license plate and end up killing you. You know, whatever. We gotta we gotta do something about this on a systemic level, man. Or else there should be like just stay. Cops should just stay away from black folks, man. You know. Did you, you hear about the you hear about the case of 
this guy, this guy was a, an officer in the military, had his uniform on, a, a, you know, a, a, a lieutenant. And they stopped him somewhere, maybe in Florida. I'm not sure. Mason, I think it was, I think it was down in Virginia. Down yeah. in Virginia, that's right, down in Virginia. Yeah. And, and they were screaming at him, and he said, I'm afraid to get out. And they said, you should be afraid. That was so indicative to me of the attitude of police. You should be afraid. This guy, I mean, he's an officer in the United States Army with his uniform his on, with his uniform on, and the cop is telling him, you should be afraid. And that, that was no, that, that, that wasn't an exception. It's a threat. That's how the police roll, and they're taught that. They're taught that. So justice for one cop, I get that. People are happy. Finally, it happened in one instance out of a, a million. But until this stuff is dealt with on a systemic level, the body count is going to continue. And that's just the way it is, you know. You know, what I what I would like to do and what I've been thinking about a lot recently is uh, putting more pressure on organized labor, UFCW, Teamsters, whatever, to not just put out a press release and saying, you know, we're against this and, uh, you know, we support the family of George Floyd and whatnot. That's easy. When are you going to hold work stoppages for one hour or an afternoon, you know, to say that this has got to stop? And uh, uh, not only would that be helpful, but I'll tell you, for a lot of people, maybe like yourself, you know, who are kind of like, well, labor unions, they're good, but, you know, they're, they're so small now and they, they seem to be their own thing. And I think that the way that these unions could make themselves more meaningful to other people, most people are not in unions. Most workers are not in unions, very small percentage. The way that they can make themselves more, more relevant would be to be more involved in these, this campaign against racist police violence and terror. Uh, it's, it's, it's a workers issue. You know, most of these people who are victimized, they are working people coming home from work, going to work, whether you're 20 year old Dante Wright or you know, what was George Floyd in his mid to late 40s, something like that, you know, they're working people just like me and you, you know, so uh, sometimes they're businessmen, you know, the cops don't care. They don't care whether you got a nice ride. <laughs> you, no. could, you could be an executive at Amazon, you know, you, you if, if it's your day to get stopped, That's you know, it. on, uh, you know, on, on some highway somewhere, you know. You be trying to explain to them, I'm an executive. I make half a million dollars a year. You know, yeah. Get out the car, nigga. You know, whatever. Get out the car. <laughs> Get out the car. Put your hands yeah, up. Yeah, you know, spread eagle. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, 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 that may be important to somebody, but it ain't important to me. Today, right. today, you are. You know. <laughs> right. No, and I'm glad you brought that up because I, I not only um do I agree with you 100. Um, I was happy to be a part of a work stoppage with a. Uh, an important union, the ILWU, mm -hmm. last mm -hmm. year they did that. Mm -hmm. they, they stopped the ports mm -hmm. for, uh, I believe it was eight to ten hours for mm -hmm. basically our entire shift. Mm -hmm. And that right there made a statement, you know, mm -hmm. shut down the whole entire West Coast. And the crazy thing you mentioned, they sent a letter to try to get solidarity with the East Coast. Mm -hmm. and the East Coast didn't want to do it. So it's like, oh, man. No, that's, that's the problem that we have also, the division within unions, not being on the same page, not sending the same message out. Uh, and the fact that they don't do it besides sending out letters, that's another issue. You know, I agree with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping, you know, one day as we form this new union, Amazon Labor Union, and we finally unionize this building, that we will be the ones to make that statement and shut down Amazon facilities whenever we have some racial disparities, which because of this system um, is bound to happen. Well, that will make that will make your union very popular 
and give it a direct connection to people who have nothing more to do with Amazon except maybe they order something from them because they have such a monopoly over that stuff. But uh, uh, I, I've been a trade unionist. Uh, I've worked for a number of unions, not for a while, but in the 80s and the 90s. And, uh, you know, there's, there's different kinds of unionism. There's, the, there's what we call business unionism when you're just concerned about getting the contract and whatever. And, uh, you know, you're pretty much part of the establishment in many ways, especially, you know, like the offices and stuff, you know, they, they depend more on the Democratic Party than they uh, depend on their workers or inform their workers. And then there's what, what some people call social unionism, which is where it's more grassroots and where you really stay in contact with the workers that your whole existence is supposed to be about them, about representing them, about knowing them, about knowing what they think, knowing how they feel. You know, too many unions, the leadership becomes alienated from that. They deal with politicians, they deal with whomever, they deal with the media. You know, in some ways they don't look much different than any other executive, you know, in a gray flannel suit, walking into a building with a, you know, attach a case, you know, but that, you know, uh, I, I like to think of, of you and, and, and the Congress of Essential Workers and, 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 other, and other unions like, you know, UE down south and in other places as more social unions where they really prioritize their relationship with the community. It's like if a kid gets shot by the cops, Social unionists are the first people there. They don't need somebody to hand them a placard demanding justice because they already made one in their office and came. They'll give you one, you know. Uh, right. they're, they're, they're always there. They're always there. You know, they're always a source, or a source of resources, whether it's financial, whether it's food, you know. And, and that, I think that's good for the workers' movement. That's, I, I consider myself that kind of trade unionist. Right. You know, that, 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 that's the thing that distinguishes revolutionaries. You, you, you mentioned uh, to some of us uh, back a while, it may have been one of these meetings we were on that uh, you were just reading the bio. Uh, a, a, actually, it's not the autobiography. It was written by another guy, a very, very good brother has passed on, of Malcolm X. I wonder if you, have you, have you been doing that? And, you know, how, yeah. how, how has that affected you? Absolutely. While I'm out there in between, I got my book in handy and um, it's, it's amazing how the relationships, uh, the relationship between actually me and Malcolm. Um, That's interesting. It's, it's so interesting because his first girlfriend in the book that he mentioned, her name was Sophia. The first girlfriend I ever dated, name was Sophia. <laughs> I was like, wow. And then um, just his transition, you know, me not being an activist and organizer before mm -hmm. last year, I was just a supervisor and mm -hmm. a concerned parent. Mm -hmm. And when he moved from um, Lansing to Boston, mm -hmm. that's when, when he moved to Boston, that's when he got his swag. Mm -hmm. That's when he realized <laughs> like, damn, I was missing all of this. I was missing out on all this and then I'm I'm in the ghetto now and mm. I'm getting my hair conked but it's right, right. You know? <laughs> so now he's yeah, getting swag and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He, he got his swag he got the lingo mm -hmm. um and that's what I felt like I'm doing now I'm developing my swag when it comes to organizing mm -hmm. and, and I'm pretty much building off of that I'm building mm -hmm. my relationship um my activism off of that off of relationships I'm building with other people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the fact that I live here in Newark, New Jersey, where Malcolm obviously visited and mm -hmm. unfortunately died, um, you know, it's just a historical connection there. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Even prior to Malcolm, you know, I went down, when I went to Bessemer, you know, before I even went to the building of Amazon, I went to Salma. Mm -hmm. And I walked, I would like to say John Lewis Bridge. I'm not even going to call it that white mm. supremacist name, mm. but 
Mm. I called the bridge of John Lewis. I walked mm. that bridge and I felt it. I just they should felt rename it. They, they, they haven't renamed that bridge the John Lewis Bridge. That, that they should do that. They should have done that like, like yesterday. A petition out there or something I, I seen. I don't know if it's still circulating, but it's, it was a petition out there at mm. one point in time to do it. I heard that they should, the city is planning on doing it. Who knows when, but um, yeah. Mm. Um, I walked that bridge. I went to the the uh, the little museum they got on the other side of the bridge. I read the plaques and mm. read the history of, and just the importance of this man was fighting for our voting rights and that we have an important vote going on in that building in Alabama. It was a connection. It's just a connection. Mm. Everything mm. correlates in this. Mm. Um, it's surreal to see. And I, I think I told you before as well, you know, Reverend um, Reverend Jackson, Reverend Jesse Jackson called me last year and mm -hmm. me and him been in communication the entire year pretty much. He's the one who gave me my lawyer. He appointed me my uh, lawyer, C.K. Hoffler. Mm -hmm. Without Reverend Jesse Jackson, I wouldn't even have a lawyer right now. So I, I owe him a great debt and um, I'm just hoping I'm making him proud. Mm -hmm. uh, when I do talk to him, I update him on what I'm doing and I know he stands in solidarity with the, uh, the movement and with the Amazon workers. So um, it's just great. It's great to mm -hmm. see all these prominent people mm -hmm. um, just sticking, passing that torch pretty much to me. Well, well, well you know, they, uh, they're trying right wing white supremacists, uh, especially in the South, but not exclusively in the South. They're trying to, you know, uh, change laws to make it more difficult for black people to vote. Uh, and uh, I mean, there's a whole movement against that. Uh, I wish it was more national and uh, I wish there was some big actions that people were taking. And I wish organized labor were more involved in it. But, uh, you know, these, these white supremacists are freaking out. I mean, the, 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 the bad part of it is that in the short run, it's a lot of trouble and a lot of obstacles for black people who want to vote, especially young black people. Uh, and we, you know, we're still struggling with that, you know, for cultural reasons, you know, people just, that's not how they roll, you know. But in the long run, it, it's good. And it's a sign that the white supremacists realize that they're losing. So now they're down to doing desperate things. Uh, and, and they'll cause some problems, but it, they, they're not going to last. It's not going to last. They're going to get pushed back. They're going to get pushed back. And uh, when, when, when you said the thing about you and Malcolm, you know, I, the thing I was thinking about is how is, um, you know, he, he was doing his swag and he was kind of like a gangster. You know, he was a gangster. Uh, and uh, he got reborn in prison. You know, which is which is where a lot of brothers, you know, uh, uh, sort of find themselves and try to, you know, reform or revolutionize themselves. Uh, in the old day, but they did it through joining the Nation of Islam. Uh, I don't know if that's what people do now, but you know, he went through that metamorphosis, and uh, you know, uh, I don't know you before you you know, before that fateful day that you led that walkout, you know, out of concern for, you know, uh, safety in relationship to COVID. But that would be an interesting chapter. You know, I, I, I hope you talk about that sometime, you know, on these, uh, on these podcasts, you know. Oh, all, all the time. Chris, Chris before <laughs> March 30th, uh, 2020, and Chris after, you know, and it's just been a short time. It's, oh, I'm about you know, to say, it's man, Larry, look. 13, 13 months? Is that right? This yeah. This is like, yeah. yeah. You know, and that's a, you know, that, that's like a, you know, that's, that's, you know. It felt you know, like, so that, it felt like forever. Let me you tell know, you this before we wrap it up, right? If people only knew, <laughs> if, people only knew <laughs> if people only knew half, I mean, uh, I'll put it like this, you know, I was I was living my life before March 30th, mm -hmm. and what I mean by that, I wasn't doing nothing crazy, but I was mm -hmm. doing the normal stuff as you know, mm -hmm. a young guys. Mm -hmm. I was partying, mm -hmm. hanging out, mm -hmm. you know, doing what I was supposed to do. But I, I knew what I was doing was right. Sticking up mm -hmm. for work is definitely right. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't regret it, you know. It, but it, I, it's it's a good lesson because you know, 
People think that leaders, you know, fall from the heavens or spring from the head of Zeus or, you know, they, they, they. <laughs> leaders come from ordinary people doing ordinary, you know, stuff. That's how, that's where leaders come from. Yeah, yeah. Leader, leader, leaders are not people without fault. They're not leaders, they're not people with, you know, that with, with this like, you know, clean record and, you know, whatever they, you know, Definitely. spend their life in church. They're ordinary people with all the highs and the lows that that means. They're ordinary people, every one of them. And, and, and when people know that, I mean, it's a good message because then people see that what, whatever phase of your journey in life you may be, never give up. You can always transform yourself in a positive direction where your life no longer is just about you and your loved ones, which is completely understandable, but your life becomes about something bigger than yourself, more important than your ego more important than you know your personal needs and wants it becomes about comes about everybody it becomes about what's righteous you know and you know fighting uh fighting what's wrong to get what's right and you know i could tell you as a, as an elder that's what makes life meaningful it's that which make life is short it, well, it's not short for you. You got a brilliant future ahead as a leader, I believe. But life is short, so you might as well try to make it meaningful to something, something beyond yourself. Message received. <laughs> Love that. Yeah. Um, I, I, man, I, would, I could talk to you all night, Larry. And um, we got a lot I of work. Talk to you all night. I know thanks, we got a lot of work to do, man. Thanks so, for having me on. Any anytime, anytime. I love talking to you. Anytime, you know. We can, we can. I gotta we can. bring you back. I will be bringing you back. And um, you know, before we wrap, I want to give a little plug for us, for those who are listening. Uh, May first, we will be in Union Square, New York City, two p.m. Join us in the on the ground before two p.m. I'm sorry. Let's start at 12 p.m. 12 p.m. What's what's going on there? Tell the people what's going on there. First. Well, at first we're going to go down to Chinatown at 12. Uh, there are two worker struggles that are located down there. One is uh, the uh, the residence of uh, the owner of a chain of laundries that treats his women, who are primarily women, migrant Latinx women, uh, treated them very bad, and they're trying to unionize. Another is a struggle of uh, a Chinese restaurant workers in several restaurants whose restaurants have been closed by a big multimillionaire uh, 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 restaurant owner who, because of the pandemic, is closing most of his restaurants in Chinatown and leaving a lot of uh, Chinese workers, you know, out on the street, you know, in, in, in these terrible conditions. But uh, some of us are going down there. But the main event is Union Square at two. And after that, we're gonna be marching on Bessos. That's right. You're gonna be leading us. <laughs> that's right. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it. We need it. everybody, everybody who can come. May 1st, man, that's what is it, eight days from today? Yeah. You know, coming. It's, it's Saturday. Weather's supposed to be Saturday, good. Saturday, weather's nice. It's New York City. We are Union Town. Yeah. It's International's Workers' Day. It's yeah. time to stand in solidarity with the workers. So I hope everybody that's listening. Uh, pass that along and join us on the ground. It's going to be an amazing event. We're going to send a powerful message to Mr. Bezos, letting mm -hmm. them know that that fight in Bessemer, it ain't over. Round mm -hmm. two, they still fighting down there anyway. Um, and we're going to fight here in New York. So he better be prepared and buckle up because I'm just All getting right. started. All right. And I see you on Saturday, brother. I see you really on Saturday where we're going to demand yeah. Mumia's freedom. Absolutely. Free Mumia, free them all. Free them all. Ooh, Jamal. And um, solidarity, brother. Love you, man. Stay safe. Love you too, man. See you Saturday. All right. Take care. <laughs>